Before that show offer that you guys were just talking about, did you three know you wanted to keep the fray going, or was there a thought like if Isaac leaves, then maybe we'll just try something else with our lives? We had um, it, we had actually that uh, Joe lives in Nashville, and we had gone. Two of us had flown down there, and had kind of like a pivotal conversation, like at a coffee shop in the morning or something, where it's kind of like, I think it was the first time that all three of us had said out loud that all three of us wanted to keep going or that there wasn't everything, everything hadn't been said yet or fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. Um, I think up until that point, I'm not sure we knew, um, you know, there was, there was a kind of a period of time where we didn't play a lot of shows, but we weren't completely inactive for like four or five years. And so, and we all had various relationships with that dynamic. Like sometimes that was cool because it gave you a lot of time at home. Sometimes it left you wanting more because you were only playing like 10 shows and that's not very fun. <laughs> uh, so, but I think that, you know, that was like, um, I want to say that was the spring before that show. Mm -hmm. It kind of solidified this idea that like, okay, we're going to try this again um, because it doesn't seem like it's finished. And then, you know, as it would have it, as chance would have it, we get the offer a couple months later and it's kind of like, yeah, well, what if we try it now? <laughs> I think yeah. it was great though. It like Dave said, we weren't really sure. There wasn't a very clear, like, no matter what, we are going to continue. It's like, it was a really great opportunity to, to just pause and, like, reflect and be intentional because <clears throat> we'd gotten to a point with, in the years with Isaac and the band where we, it felt like autopilot. Like, things felt familiar. Um, things felt pretty comfortable. And it was all positive, but we were kind of just, like, doing we were just by. rolling and yeah. going through and going through and so when there was a stick in the spokes and er, everything stopped it was like a great opportunity to like step back like evaluate reapproach. you know like um it's amazing to like be able to start the band again as adults with, you know and like reevaluate how you want to do it and so that it was an imp it was important to like pause and and to not know and it felt like we all had space that we gave each other to kind of process through that and many phone calls mm -hmm. and, and coffees, yeah. <laughs> was Isaac's leaving a shock to you guys or you kind of knew this was coming? We knew it was coming. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Mm -hmm. He he made it kind of clear for a few years prior to that that I think he was trying to figure out how to kind of slowly back out the door. I, I mean, that said, I still remember sitting on the couch in my place when I used to live in Nashville, getting the actual phone call. And it was shocking. It was like, I think maybe I thought it could happen, but I didn't want to believe that it could happen. Yeah. And I, I think I, I think we maybe had an inclination that that was what was going to happen on the call. I remember like lighting a candle next to me <laughs> and like getting tea. I was like preparing myself like, <laughs> what's going to happen? <laughs> Never tell you that. No. Yeah. No, what kind of candle? Do you? Candle. I don't remember. Something nice or like some like sort of weird incense thing. Yeah. 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 A whole bunch of prayer candles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Like those moments, those challenges, they're scary as shit, but often like forced you to really bring out the best in you. Yeah. It becomes like a difficult gift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you look back on it like, whoa, that was so hard to go through you know um but it led you to where you're at now and you would have never gotten to you know to realize life now that. as you know it and as we know it had you had we not gone through that and and you know and you know and everybody everybody you, you process loss differently you know and and and, and end and then closure never comes the way you think it's going to come you know like when we were dreaming about the beginning in the beginnings of this band, you know, we're dreaming about like someday we're going to be, you know, our grandchildren are going to be running around and, you know, we'll be playing shows and we'll be 75 and we'll all live on the same property. <laughs> closure doesn't come the way, the way you think, you know, and then we had to, like Dave was saying, like we had to process our own way, the, the, the end, you know, cause it really was the death of, of yeah. what was, you know, and and it takes time and everybody goes through different process there um and so in time we maneuvered and aligned and and you know this kind of shared idea that okay there, there there can be something you know for us there can be something new here and and it's nothing new under the sun if you look at the history of bands 
Yeah. You know, I, I, I kept reminding myself of that as we were having difficult talks, as we were facing an unknown, the fears, all of it, that, okay, th- you know, they had to go through this, you know. They had these same conversations, you know, and it's been done, and somehow it's bands can evolve and change and have incredible careers, you know, after after that. Um, and th- so that was like, mm-hmm. a, reoccurring re- reminder of okay others have done this so we we can we can figure out a way to do this can you describe the void that was left because a lot of it does come down to this idea that like it's just that person is just not around and it's a comfort thing and from my understanding you guys started the band really right yeah it started with the two of you mm-hmm. but you've always taken lead as it relates to writing songs um yeah it uh you know, I think we're we are the sum total of the music that we've listened to, the books that we've read, the friendships, the relationships totally. that we've had. Um, you know, bands are really just made up. It, it it's it's just it's it, you know it's the individual stories and people coming together and playing music. But but a band is just kind of mythical. If you can't it's touch label, it, yeah. it's not a thing. It's not a tree. You know, it's just like oh. It's this. There's a word or a couple words, and and it's just kind of this made up thing. But it's part of your life and your story, and so we're we're the sum total of all those things, all of our history, all, all the the arguments, the fights, the the ups and downs, um, and that's what makes the whole, you know. But yeah, the void. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't. I think I, I had to I had to let that you know I, I saw it you know in our collaboration first because I think it just started to um, become distant you know and and that's okay because when someone you know what's true within you you know if you if you don't bring that out um, can can really destroy you but but what's if you bring it forth and you and you express it that that is what saves you and i think for isaac he needed to he it took him time you know but he needed to bring that forth and it's what's saved him as an individual individual and it's what saved us as a band so you know we're we're forever grateful for the time the the story that we that we've written um and and now it's about the new and about what, what what's ahead. You know, it's funny. I, I don't. <clears throat> we haven't really talked about this much, but I, you saying void and like asking about that, it doesn't really. To me, it hasn't really felt like a void. And it, I'll echo what Joe just said. Like we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for for him, for Isaac and his involvement. Like pivotal. Um, and, I'm, and we all miss him on certain levels, like as a friend, but relationally and just like the dynamic to me, instead of it feeling like a void, it's kind of felt like this mythical thing was supported by four legs. Like a, if you picture like a chair or a stool mm-hmm. that had four legs and we got used to that and being supported that way. And then one of those got taken away. And you're all getting stronger. And it, the, when one leg got taken away, it we got wobbly at first for sure. We were like, oh, shit, we're falling over. But then it just required us to, like, re- reformat. And now it's a three-legged stool. And it's just, like, that's the new, like Joe's saying. It's like it doesn't necessarily feel like a void as much as, like, a a new shape. That, you know, a new shape. Yeah. It very much is giving, like, a rebirth of the fray. Well, and speaking of birth, um, the perspective of the baby that's a traumatic experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. No, you're right. you're right. I mean, think about it, all of us, right? Yeah. We all tra- fucking need tra- trauma. You know, you're comfortable, you know, in this beautiful, perfect Ooh. setting. Warm wound. Oh, my yeah. God. All the nutrients The best place need. in the world. So true. So and true. then you're thrust into lights no. and, and, and everything's overwhelming. It's been shit since, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> So that's, you know, that is the same and, you know, similar experience. Like it's been, it's been like, there's been trauma. It's been, it's been, you know, eye opening and scary and all the things. And then, 
There's so much beauty in it, though. Yeah. 